let me just comment on the uniqueness of anti-Semitism, the uniqueness of Jew hatred, and, and what sets it apart from other hatreds. Now, please hear me. Different people have suffered through history terribly. Different groups. There have been genocides. There have been atrocities. There, there has been enslavement. There, there have been horrible things suffered by different groups of people over the centuries that are terrible, that are horrific, that are barbaric, that are unjustifiable, that show the very, very worst of human nature. The reality is Jew hatred, hatred of the Jewish people, is unique. It has been pointed out that it is the world's longest hatred. In other words, to single out a particular group and for them to be singled out as a people and hated as such through history is unprecedented. And, and you can go back, you can go back to the, uh, you can go back to, in the Bible, the book of Esther, the hatred of Jews, but even outside of the Bible. About 2,300 years ago in the Greco-Roman world where Jews were hated because they were different. And it, it's not just the longest hatred, but it's the most widespread hatred. If you think of it, radical Islam hates the Jews, and much of Islam through history has, has, has hated the Jews. There's been anti-Semitism in church history. Some of the most vile things ever, ever written have been written by Christian leaders against Jewish people. And, 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 and then you go through, there's atheistic hatred of Jews. You think, why is anti-Semitism so incredibly pervasive? I mentioned this uh, amazing book. For those watching, we're just going to just uh, put something up when I was in my studio uh, with this book. And uh, just to, to give you an idea, so Dan, you can, you can run that B-roll. So um, I, 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 I was cited in the book, my book on our, our hands are stained with blood, the tragic story of the church and the Jewish people about anti-Semitism in church history. I was cited in the book. That's how I found out about it. And uh, I bought the book. I was stunned. It's like 650 pages and the exact title, hang on, the exact title is, I want to make sure I get it right, a brief, oh yeah, brief, 670 pages brief, a brief and visual history of anti-Semitism by Israel Bitton, B-I-T-T-O-N, I've never seen anything like it. I have no idea how the thing was produced. It's a $50 hardcover book. We're not selling it through our ministry. But I've, I've no idea how it was produced. It, it must have been underwritten left and right, every page with visuals and graphics. And then I think there's 75 different sections in it where you, just, you have an app and you just scan. And they'll take you right, okay, here's archival footage. Or here's illust more illustrations. Or here's lectures. And I'm stunned by it. It, it is an incredible compilation, and I reached out to, to, uh, to Mr. Baton and asked if he'd, if he'd come on the air and join us. We do have on the line with us Israel Baton. Israel, thanks so much for joining us today on the Line of Fire. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Brown, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to be talking about this important topic with uh, you and uh, your audience. All right, so, so you are leader of an organization, Americans Against Anti-Semitism. And you put together this book. Before you came on, I was just singing the praises of, of the book. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. I, I mean, the, I, I can't imagine the amount of research that went into it, but this must have been heavily underwritten to be able to publish this book. I, I mean, I, I know it goes into putting on a book. So this, yeah. I mean, it has the, this, uh, you know, introduction by the president of Israel, the endorsements behind it. So how did you get this collaborative effort even to happen? Sure. So really, this project was born of the creation of this grassroots startup organization itself, Americans Against Anti-Semitism, which was created in 2019 in response to what we, you know, the people I work with right away identified as a very serious spike uh, uh, for a lot of different factors that, that obviously go into creating such things. But we noticed the spike. We noticed that other organizations already legacy orgs were not really understanding the issue or responding to the issue for a variety of reasons. And therefore, we set out to not duplicate efforts, but say, what can we do to make a dent of a difference in some kind of measurable and meaningful way? Not just, you know, do a campaign, and get a lot of attention and, 
you know, hope that uh, somehow uh, seeing an ad that might be, even if it's compelling, is just going to radically change the picture and, you know, thousands of years of, of this type of uh, phenomenon. So uh, one of the things we noticed right away was, and obviously the starting point in almost any corrective for uh, hatred, social hatred, and, and, you know, intercommunal interfaith animosity is, is ignorance. When there's ignorance, it's the perfect breeding ground for uh, both indulging in hatred as well as for Jews who don't know their own history, especially young Jews who are going out in, you know, university campuses across the country and are being challenged in ways that they've never been challenged before with lies and just really grotesque uh, conspiracies that are thrown at them and that if they don't know their history and they don't know the truth, uh, the simple truth, the, the you know, not, not based on Jewish sources, but as, as it's always been out there based on, you know, the sources themselves, whatever, wherever it came from. Um, so it was important to address that gap. We noticed that anti-Semitism, although there's a lot written about Jewish history and there's a lot written about anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism as a subject had never been treated uh, curricular, you know, it had never been given and, and translated into a textbook. There is Holocaust, there's uh, Israel, and, you know, Israeli history, Zionism, Jewish history, but there isn't this focus because it's kind of, in the past, it's been looked at as well. It shows up in different episodes, but it's not really its own thing. And now with anti-Semitism obviously skyrocketing, there's interest and in, understanding this and th this phenomenon. And, and more importantly, for young people of all backgrounds, uh, young and old, but especially young people who are going to be in these uh, uh, very high-pressure environments where, you know, it's okay to encounter differing opinions, but when it's uh, maliciousness and, and, you know, people coming at you with blood libels and saying, you know, you murdered, you know, Israel, Israel murders uh, Palestinian children, like it's a it's a fact of life, like they, they pick apples off the tree, you know, and uh, that's very stunning for people who are on the receiving end. It, it's not so clear and simple as to how to respond, especially when people are speaking in the name of justice, in the name of humanitarian principles. Uh, every, anyone who has a heart would be like, you know, if you're going to see an image of a, of a child in Gaza whose house was uh, demolished, uh, anyone, you know, you just, being Jewish makes no difference. You should feel something. But Obviously, that's not the complete picture, not the full story. So yeah. really, the book came about as simply seeing an opportunity, doing something about it. Um, and it was a very big undertaking. It took about two years uh, of nonstop work. Um, and the only reason why it was really feasible is because I d did the research, the writing, and the design, and the layout, oh. uh, the, all, the full range of content, uh, the videos that are popping up on augmented reality, all of that. That's what made it. Uh, cost effective, if you will. Otherwise, no other organization would put together the team ordinarily needed or the budget, which would have been three, four, five times the amount that it actually took. So thankfully, people did see the value. It was underwritten by, uh, you know, their names are in the beginning of the book, uh, yep. various, uh, uh, you know, individuals and families who uh, who saw the need and responded. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. I, I bought it for myself immediately. And when I got, I thought, "What in the world?" I mean, the weight of it, the physical weight of it, <laughs> and then and then flipping through. And when I brought it in to show my producers uh, uh, day before yesterday, one of them, their his first comment was, "This is like a, a, a school textbook," because of yeah. the the constant illustrations and pictures. The fact you did this in two years is still mind-boggling in terms of the amount of yeah. research work, content on every single page. But this is really a a 21st century book, in that there's an app. You download a free app, and then you have 75 or so different places in the book where it says, scan me, and the book actually comes alive. So, so what, what's some of what, and I want to talk about it, the phenomenon of anti-Semitism in a moment, but first the phenomenon of the book. So what, what are some of the things that come alive when you, when you just scan with your phone, and now the, the book is talking to you? Sure. So, you know, there's this thing of augmented reality where, and virtual reality, which in applications such as these and books, especially in education, it can very well veer into gimmicks and, you know, just kind of having it because it's cool. In this scenario, note the title of the book is A Brief and Visual History. That is, it would not be the same book if it was only text, not only because it would be boring, but because there is, if one really seeks to understand anti-Semitism, it can not only be the literature and the pure text, because there is a 
a trove of, and there's this long legacy of the visual depictions and understanding how, uh, you know, Jews, you know, we're called shapeshifters, but we're morphed according to the projections of, you know, each time and place. If they uh -huh. needed, if it needed to be about finance, it would be about finance. If it needed to be about race, it was about race and being a, a vermin class, whatever it might have been. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's obviously that's something that uh, has evolved uh over time, but uh, what we're seeing with the AR in this case is that there's a need also, the other side is that some of these uh, propositions that anti-Semites have made over the generations is, especially where there's uh, video evidence in the last hundred years, is mind boggling and, and in some cases like almost unbelievable. So there's an aspect of see it for yourself, hear it for yeah. yourself. I'm just saying this as someone that's combated anti-Semitism for many, many years. This. It's, it's a must. And for the whole family, different ages, uh, you, you dig into this. Scholars want to research, just find tons of stuff in one place. And then again, the visual elements. It's, it really is an extraordinary book, a brief and visual history of anti-Semitism. It's, it's worth five or 10 times what you pay for it because of the production values there. And then everything that will come alive in the book for you. Uh, and Israel, as you know, I mentioned it to you, early on in my own faith journey, the local rabbi gave me a book on anti-Semitism in church history. And as I've talked to professors at seminaries over the years, church historians, and I said, when do you teach on this in your classes? Or where, when do you talk about the sermons of Chrysostom and God hates the Jews? Or when do you talk about Luther's anti-Semitic writings? And they've looked at me shamefully and said, we don't. And it reminds me of what Edward Flannery said, the Catholic scholar, that the pages of history Jews have memorized, uh, Christians have torn out of their history books. So we can never be reminded too much. But right before the break, you were giving one of the illustrations, which is impossible to, to believe this without seeing it about Hitler. So please, back to you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for that, um, you know, vote of confidence and uh, support in, you know, the book and what you saw. And uh, it's um, greatly appreciated. I don't either stand to gain from it, despite what I, I put. I, I did it because I believed in it. And, uh, you know, it'll get as far as it gets. And, you know, hopefully it makes that impact. Um, in terms of what I was saying earlier, I'll just finish on that very quickly. Is is just, you know, the visual and the effect is really to uh, to illustrate the full scale, the, the full dimension of this issue, because to uh, discount the visual element, to discount the fact that the most outlandish things have been said, um, it's also important, and there's a reason why, you know, it's a history. The point is for people to understand that there is absolutely nothing in the anti-Semites and anti-Semitism canon that has not already been said by whoever, you know, originated it 2,500 years ago about money, about gold, about, uh, you know, disease, about uh, taking over, plotting, whatever it might be, there's no originality. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me personally, having experienced anti-Semitism growing up and, you know, kind of hits you out of left field, that was very important to help me understand that, in a sense, don't take it personally. It's got nothing to do with me. I didn't do anything. Uh, those people, you know, individuals who engage in such activity, obviously, have some kind of problem, and they're projecting that and taking it out on, you know, someone who just happens to be uh, fitting a, a, a certain scapegoat uh, description. So that's that's obviously uh, uh, rather unfortunate. But um, yeah, that that is just to complete that point that you know it, it is not in fact a gimmick, and it is important to look and to see and to hear uh, and to for, with one's own eyes and one's own ears. You know, it, there, there's a point of having that impression, especially on. Uh, younger people who uh, are, you know, not being exposed to this stuff or, or being exposed to things in 15-second bits and, and whatnot. Yeah. So what would be an example, then, of something that, that Hitler said or did that's like, no, that never happened? It's like, okay, let's look. Here, here, well, look with your own eyes. Yeah. The, the, I, it's not almost that it never happened. It's just it would have found anyone that when we talk about it after the fact that 6 million Jews were killed, you know, millions of, of people from every nationality, Poles, Russians, Germans themselves, uh, you know, uh, uh, civilians, uh, you know, children, women were also killed. Um, and, and that scale of deaths would be unimaginable. Yet 
we look at 1939 and there's video of Hitler proclaiming at the Reichstag that, you know, if uh, there's a world war looming and if it, if it starts, uh, it, the world should know that it's the Jews who are going to be destroyed and pay the price. So, like, wow, wait, what? He actually got on the stage and mm. said he was going to do what he did and still the world didn't believe it for six years as he was perpetuating this, this brutal genocide. That's astounding. That's a lesson in, in of itself. So, and that's just one little video that, you know, makes the page come alive. Basically, you'll see the image and then it converts, you scan, you hold the phone over the page and that just turns into the video, actual archival video of, you know, that moment, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever it might be. And it's the same thing with other seminal moments. The other thing is there are 3D models of different uh, uh, landmarks, such as the uh, Second Temple, such as the Kaaba in, in Mecca um, and uh, others where, you know, the user can kind of manipulate it, turn it around, basically explore it uh, as a 3D model. Uh, so there are items like that as well that make it a little more interactive and immersive than simply, you know, text on a page. And the whole point of it, as I write in the book, is not to create debaters and let's engage and just arm people to go out there with facts and, you know, and debate. The whole point was that it should let the people, you know, any good intention person know that they don't need to debate. Their, their life is, you know, Israel, the fact that it's like seeking legitimacy for its existence, that that's a problem. Uh, you know, nobody as a matter of, of existential fact has to prove their right to exist. The fact that you exist, you have a right to exist, it's that simple. You know, that's the, that's the rule of nature. Uh, and that's why it's a crime to kill somebody, because who... And, 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 and take that existence from someone else. And yet, this is a double standard that has long been applied to Jews and now to the state of Israel. Yeah, again, friends, the book, A Brief and Visual History of Anti-Semitism, Israel B. Bitton, B-I-T-T-O-N. So you've immersed yourself in this. You experienced this growing up. You've immersed yourself in the subject. You've looked at the academic literature. You also have some uh, philosophical studies in your background. We've just got a couple of minutes, but if someone said to you, why? Why, why anti-Semitism? Because the, you can't connect all the disparate threads through history and different, you know, and the accusations and everything. You said they repeat themselves, but you, when you try to connect all the dots, it becomes very difficult. Be, you know, if, when Jews are, are influential, they're hated. When they're at the bottom of society, they're hated. When they're religious, they're hated. When they're secular, they're hated. Right. So right. and if someone says, why anti-Semitism, what's your ultimate answer? So I would say it comes down to really three things. Um, it's storytelling, the phenomenon of hatred as a human, uh, in the human condition, and then the fact that Judaism is the only religion in the history of the world, in the evolution of religions, to give birth to outgross religions. And that in of itself, unfortunately, has never really been examined, appreciated, mm. uh, really looked at and say, how do we go back to that source and correct where that, you know, because, well, if you're coming as an outgrowth and there's uh, a a animosity, there's, uh, and for reasons, because at first, before Christianity became, uh, you know, the, the uh, religion of the, of the Roman Empire, they were actually persecuted by the, the Roman Empire for, for centuries. Right. Um, and, and it was, you know, understandable acrimony between this group that, that was coming from, you know, uh, uh, a Jewish core, and then there was confusion in, in, in beliefs on both sides. Both sides would then castigate and say, hey, you know, don't go next to the Christians. They would tell Jews, they would tell Jew Christians, don't go next to the Jews, vice versa. From there, the fact is that it's Judaism that gave birth to Christianity, uh, gave birth to Islam, that, that is now uh, uh, faith for nearly 4 billion people or more in, in the world today. So, that's a very different trajectory than almost any other group and mm. the world's interest in them. Now, what preceded that moment of getting off on the wrong foot is, as, the, you know, there was a divergence between Christianity and Judaism is the idea that, well, where does hate come from? What, what is hatred? We look at, if you look at the Bible, the, the Torah, the Old Testament, the, the first instance of this type of hatred and what it leads to is Cain and Abel. And, and why has Cain killed his brother? Because he's jealous. And what is jealousy? It's a story. That means that hatred, that hate that leads someone to do something as taking someone's life is based on a story. Now, in most cases, that story is corrupted. Of course, if somebody does a horrible thing, 
to, to another person, we can understand why they may hate that individual. It would still not be it would still not be logical to expand that hatred to that, you know, every association that that person may have. So what we have with Judaism, what we have with this legacy of anti-Semitism is the fact that, well, going back a second, what are what makes humans really different than all other animals is that we're storytellers who can actually record media and pass that on transgenerationally in ways that, say, whales, which can do a lot transgenerationally, transgener still cannot. They can't record a, a, a physical media picture of, uh, you know, their great ancestor and pass that information down in a direct way. But when it comes to humanity and society, we can. We can make up ancient books that say horrible things about Jews that will survive over the generations, that will mm. proliferate, that will uh, take on new words, new meanings, new context, etc. But now we have this storytelling problem because what, behind any hatred, we say anti-Semitism, and some will say, no, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm anti-Zionist. No, I, I don't hate Jews. I just don't like that they control the world. I don't like to hate <laughs> Jews. I just, all of that type of stuff at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, literally, it's, it's, it's constant, it's repeated, there's nothing uh, uh, novel in that. But yeah. the point being that these are corrupted stories. The idea is that as a society, collectively, we're all responsible, and the corruption is the corruption of the golden law. Whereas nobody would accept the treatment, whether it's to Jews, whether it's to a black person, or to a Christian, if you're a Christian being persecuted throughout the world. There, there's one standard, either persecution uh, of people for their identity or their beliefs or their physical characteristics, whatever it might be, is either society writ large is against it and they're adamant and they're consistent or not. Yeah. Hey, listen, I've got to jump in. We are, we are actually out of time already. But thank you, sir, for coming on the air. And thank you for putting this, this book together. I really urge everybody that can do it, especially as we come into the high holy days, get this book, share it, let truth disseminate and push back against the darkness, a brief and visual history of anti-Semitism. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.